And now it's time for the real food fight to begin. Joining us are two of the country's most outspoken restaurant pundits, former chef and current talk show host on 96.9 Boston Talks, Michael Graham, and former bagger at Mal's Supermarket in West Peabody, and current director of the Phantom Gourmet News Division, Michael Andelman. <laughs> Fellas, thank you. Thank you for joining us for the debate. My pleasure. Our first topic today is Italian food. There are two types of Italian restaurants. There is old school Italian, red sauce, meatballs, and then there's the new school Italian, kind of the fancier, maybe northern Italian restaurants. Michael Graham, you're a fan of the newer, kind of Absolutely. fancier northern Italian That's restaurants. Right. Why? Well, because it's fantastic. Because the, uh, and one, one reason is because the food is very similar to the American South. It came from a rural area. Mm. People cook from the ground. The northern Italians call themselves the people of the bean. You see a lot of cannel, cannel, cannelloni beans in the, in the food. Plus, they love meats and steaks and sausages. Great food, no matter where you start. You have northern, uh, on the north end, you've got, what, pretza and bricos yeah. doing great northern Northern Italian cuisine. Sure. It's fascinating. It's interesting. On the other hand, the Southern Italian red sauce crap cuisine <laughs> is wow. for the palate of people who develop their eating habits taking Chef Boyardee straight out of the can cold. Isn't that yeah. right, Michael? I'm a huge fan of going out for an Italian steak because Boston has no steakhouses. I've been <laughs> searching for an overpriced steakhouse. So, yes, Northern Italian food is wonderful. Mm -hmm. If, uh, like Michael Graham, when you go out to dinner, you wear a top hat and a monocle and have your driver <laughs> take there. Yeah, I like going out for a $400 meal of pasta that's this big. Uh, the old school Italian, the meatball, the chicken parm, this is the food of the people. It is so tasty. You are the one percenter with your northern no, absolutely, Italian absolutely. food. This red sauce direct poured into a pot. You can't tell the difference. Lasagna, spaghetti, bolognese. It's all just this red sauce direct. Okay, Come that's on, enough time. It's enough time on that subject. Okay. I'm getting the word here. Okay, let's move on to subject number two. Perhaps the most controversial subject of all in the restaurant world, which is tipping. A lot of controversies. Now, I remember when you'd go out for a meal, you'd have good service, you'd tip 15%. Now it seems like the standard is 20%. Michael, where is, what's your position on what the state of tipping is right now in the restaurant world? 20 is the new 15, yeah. and in fact, someone just told me 25 is the new 20. Wow. Service has never been better. It is the most important part of a meal, even more important than the food, mm. is the service. They can make or break your meal. Is that not worth at least 20%? Cheap Michael Graham, <laughs> you now have the floor. What do you think about Well, first tipping? of all, I'm from down south where we go to the line and get our own meat and three veg on a plate ourselves. You can tip okay? yourself, yeah. So exactly. <laughs> but the, I'm sorry. First of all, the, the key question of tipping is, will you stiff? Because if you won't stiff, then you're not tipping. You're just a slave to propriety going, I better give them some money. So I am a firm, uh, pardon me, <laughs> I am a firm stiffer. Wow. And I also I occasionally that. don't that tip. That is just terrible. Because it's the right thing but to do. Not, Suck it, service it, it, means it, that you get Michael, stiff. Michael, it might not, not be the tip. waiter or the waiter's fault. It might be the it's chef's fault. The waiter no, it fault. is not Have always their fault. I've waited tables. It is the sh my job to manage your meal. Mm -hmm. If you manage my meal so I am 20 minutes late for crappy cold food that's not what I ordered, wow. you get zero tip. But if it's great, 20% easily. Don't even think oh, about it. Oh, well, 20% easily. Yeah, 20%. Okay. As I said, this is that was the most controversial <laughs> subject of all, but let's move on. You've made reference a couple times, Michael, during this debate that you are indeed from the South. Michael, mm -hmm. born and raised Bostonian and yes. proud of it. Michael, you think that mm -hmm. there is superior food and apparently service <laughs> down South. Mike, you think we're better up here. I mean, Mike, explain why. This is the craziest thing. There are 50 good restaurants in the mm -hmm. South End of Boston. Yeah. There was only two good restaurants in the entire South. <laughs> What a terrible area. There's four reasons I go to the South. Yep. If I need a gun, fireworks, <laughs> mm. cigarettes for a dollar, or really crappy foods uh -huh. served by a dirty, toothless, sketchy man. Wow. It is, when you come up to this area, you have the best food in the world. You have waterfront dining, you have lobster, you have fried clam. You cannot even compare the two regions for cuisine. And of course, there is a key right there. Anyone can take a lobster, or any idiot should be able to take a lobster and make a decent meal. You just get it hot. That's all. <laughs> if you can master fire, you can do lobster. <laughs> Down South, the post Civil War economy where there was nothing to eat. You had to find ways to make palo meals out of leftover corn grindings and pig's knuckles. Mm -hmm. And the Southern cuisine is so amazing, they've accomplished it. You'll have more meals, great meals by accident in the alleys of New Orleans than you'll have on the main streets of Massachusetts. Zagat in the South only lists the Waffle Houses. That's the only <laughs> really? places that Not they have. true. I can take you to a redneck place in Charleston, Dell's Diner, where there are no teeth, all great food. It's $5 for a meal, and it beats many $50 meals here. Well, in there he is. He is Michael Graham, 96 69 Boston Talks, Michael Andelman on Phantom Gourmet News and Radio. We've learned a lot, or perhaps we have learned nothing at all.